Hello everyone, I'm Bülent Büyükseyer and welcome to my second broadcast in English. And we are here together with another Smart Talks episode, which is live on my YouTube channel, Facebook and LinkedIn page. About our guest, uh, Karin Stenstam is here with us tonight. Two non-native English speakers together uh, speaking English. <laughs> and she is living in London for a long time. She's an excellent leader, experienced manager, and has something to say. Uh, I have uh, lots of questions to her, and I'll be right back in 15 seconds, but with Karen this time. Hello, Karin. <laughs> Hello, I love your intro. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is fun, right? <laughs> yes, no, very enthusiastic, very professional, I like it. Thank you. And thank you for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. And uh, it's very nice to have you. Well, I'm very honored to be asked. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. And uh, we didn't uh, see each other face to face even yet. And I just <laughs> connected to you by LinkedIn. And you were so kind uh, enough uh, for uh, accepting my invitation. And uh, first of all, uh, Can you introduce yourself a little bit about your career and yourself? Sure. Um, so Karin Stenstam, I'm Swedish, if you're wondering uh, why the name is kind of unusual. Um, living in London at the moment. Uh, my last 10 years have been in the education industry. Um, sales, operations, talent management, even a short stint in real estate. Um, I worked with... Um, Uh, English learning for kids and teenagers during their summer holidays, but also in higher education uh, business school. Um, I am kind of a, a, a mixed bag. I'm very curious. Um, I like a lot of things, which probably is proven by my degree is actually in physics engineering. Um, yeah. But during my uni years, I mainly gave my passion to uh, producing musicals. So it's very much a mixed bag. But I am oh. um, passionate about people and leadership. Um, for yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, musicals uh, are the, were the fun part, I guess. <laughs> yes, yes, still is, still is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Karen, and uh, let uh, me remind our uh, viewers uh, about your situation at the moment. When we yeah. agreed for the first time about uh, this uh, conversation, uh, Karim was still working in health uh, business school. And uh, but she uh, she uh, she is not working at the moment. Uh, please uh, just explain your situation a little bit uh, to not to misunderstood be uh, misunderstood by our guests. Yes, very good point. So uh, anything I say today is my own opinion and mine alone. I'm not representing any organization uh, in this conversation. Um, yes, as of uh, yesterday, I'm unemployed. Uh, I'm a, one of many COVID uh, consequences. Uh, it is hard time for any business organization, um, but it it ended very amicably. Uh, it it was well handled, and I think that's the main thing you can ask for in a crisis like this. So, um, starting to work with a career coach on Friday, and I'm gonna see where the next journey takes me. Very good. Uh, I wish you the best with your next career Thank step. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and uh, when we were discussing about the topics, uh, we were focusing on leadership and especially uh, on attitudes, uh, hiring for attitudes uh, topic. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, leadership. I, I want to ask you a very specific question <laughs> about uh, leadership. Which type right. of leaders is making uh, a difference in 2020? Wow, um, big question. Um, okay, so I think my my view on leadership overall and 2020, I guess, in some ways, is testing that theory. I mean, we all heard about VUCA. Uh, that is a concept we throw around quite a lot. Uh, uh, what is it? Volatility, uncertainty, complexity. And what am I missing? Ambiguity. Ambiguity. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> ambiguity, <To>, uh, yeah. Saying <laughs> one more English. Um, which, of course, has proven itself uh, this year. I, my my view on this would be that leaders that have uh, put a good framework in place for their people to run with their own talents. Um, and that could just be about the team, the people in the organization. They they know their playground, so to say. They There's boundaries of... 
Uh, what kind of behavior do we promote, accept? Uh, who are we, like core values? Like how do we work here? But also boundaries, what don't, what don't we do? What is not acceptable? And this is really where we would never cross that line. Um, and then having very clear purpose and vision in that case, very often KPIs, you know, I know what we're trying to achieve. Because if you've given people those, those sort of frames, very often people want to do well. So then they will strive to, you know, follow this complexity and, and, and really make a difference, see issues, solving issues. Um, so I think it can be hard to put those in place in a crisis, but I believe that leaders that have had that kind of uh, maybe philosophy before can then run and, and try and just problem solve with their team uh, because even a leader won't have a, every answer at this point. They will have to sort of get a lot of input from their team that is sort of on the ground and, and these things because they might not even know what challenges there is. Um, yeah, that that's that's my answer to a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, I sense some bits uh, while you were talking about leadership. You know, uh, the servant leadership concept is very popular at the moment. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, do you consider yourself uh, as a servant leader? A servant leader? Yeah. Did, did oh, you hear about that? No, I haven't. Like, Tell me. Like, like uh, um, for example, a situation that you are not... Uh, just giving directives you're you are with your team you are working together you're coaching right. you're mentoring uh, ah. uh, basically you're serving your uh, in, uh, teams your team right mm -hmm. uh, i think i understand the concept and and i do believe that today people want a coach rather than a boss uh, in the same way as team want to work for a purpose not for a paycheck we're, we're interested in journeys yeah. instead of just a job so so i think those things goes very well in hand here so you're not looking for a boss just telling you what to do you're looking for someone that can take you places though i do believe you're looking for someone you want to follow i still think that that tradition is there um uh, that there is someone that can inspire you to do to, to think bigger um but but a good leader yes in the sense of serving i like leaders that work a lot to take away roadblocks for their teams. A lot of a leader's time end up being like taking away maybe admin and not just doing the admin for them, but finding ways of maybe actually removing certain things from their teams that isn't efficient or, or internal politics that needs to be cruised over. So in that sense, I think you serve your team. Yeah, maybe uh, you uh, also answered my next question about uh, the young, <laughs> the young. I do talk youth. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is a good thing. Uh, I, uh, I'm wondering about the young generation. I, I know yeah. uh, you have uh, many young uh, people uh, uh, were in your team. So, what kind of a leader uh, the new generation wants to work with at the moment? Yeah. We hear a lot about this, this demanding new generation that is uh, tricky to manage and just, you know, one thinks that they haven't earned and all of these things. Um, I think my theory is that I think these are human um, uh, longings. Uh, it's just that our parent generation never really understood that they could ask for it. That's my view. I think this is things that humans look for. Um, rather than a new generation. I think the new generation now they understand they are the is being, interest. yeah, they've realized that they can actually not just ask for it, they can demand it. So I think it's more frustrating for, for maybe if you come from a different generation because you were told you couldn't ask for it. You were supposed to just do your work and things will follow. And here comes a generation that is asking for things that, I believe everybody wants to be seen, heard, understood. I think you want to be seen, heard, and understood from your parents. You want to be understood by your partner. You want to be understood by your manager, your team. I think these are very basic needs that will just make us excel better and be in a better place. So I think it's just congratulations to the new generation figuring out to ask for it. Um, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, speaking of young, this is uh, before. Uh, this is a before and after picture. 
10 years ago <gülüyor> ben, Karin, ben Karin starts uh, with her career in uh, how to add English first and yeah. uh, after now <gülüyor> This speech is just taken two days ago <gülüyor> It's very true, actually. It is very true. <laughs> I didn't make, make this up. They are 10 years apart. Um, yeah, this is what a career can do for you. Uh, I think the what what I want to say with that photo a lot is actually, I think that the now photo, realizing that you don't like what is it to work and what is it to be professional, realizing that actually you can be so professional and so good at what you're doing, but you can be silly at the same time and you can offer your weaknesses or flaws up uh, for for jokes as well. So I think that's that's definitely the kind of environment I've been in, which has been a luxury. Uh, on the uh, right hand, uh, right, it's, it's, it's right, yeah, yes, right hand, uh, <laughs> the, the older version, uh, I <laughs> see a wise and a fun old lady. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah I can imagine <laughs> you like uh, 40 years later, not now. <laughs> exactly. Well, I get a little bit of uh, more gray hair there. Uh, I might have faked it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Karin, uh, everybody is talking about attitude, hiring for attitude, yeah. uh, hiring for experience, hiring for attitude. Please, please uh, tell us what this attitude all about. Uh, uh, first of all, can you define what attitude is? <laughs> Ooh, uh, this is back to, I, I worked in education industry for 10 years, but I'm not a teacher. Uh, I'm definitely <laughs> not. Um, let me, okay, my From view your perspective. On it is, From yeah, from my perspective. So mm -hmm. I think what is key for me is that I do not mean personality. Uh, I'm not talking about extrovert or introvert or um, how, you, how you process information. Are you someone that thinks things through or do you talk a lot? Like, is it charisma? I mean, these things for certain roles, maybe they do matter. But in, in overall, that's not what I'm, what I'm thinking about when I think about attitude. Um, attitude is is a mindset. It's um, I mean the, the most powerful one that people talk about is growth mindset. Uh, so the willingness to learn, um, humbleness to to acknowledge mistakes and and, and learn from them, uh, but also maybe you know um, resilience to change and and uh, uncertainty, um, curiosity, willingness to learn. Uh, sort of the Attitude for me is something that very often uh, you you might change over your life cycle. I'm sure you do. I mean, we all go through different things through our life, but but very often an attitude can be something that you, regardless of what role you have or what company you work for, you sort of bring your mindset or attitude to it. Um, and I think it, it 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 goes hand in hand with skills. Sometimes it's it's not the Black or yeah, white line, that. right? It's there is a slight difference between competence and attitude, I guess. It's very similar, uh, yeah. but attitude is the way of uh, showing your competencies. Maybe I don't know. Actually. I mean, okay. Let me say this. I think my attitude is I, I am uh, I'm very open to say yes to things. I like saying yes mm -hmm. to things. That it's according to me, that's an attitude and mindset. For example, I said yes to you without even knowing you. You you said, well, how about having this? And then I end up doing that, which, of course, becomes part of a skill that I end up putting myself in these situations that then uh, can be part of my profile that people would more think is traditional. Um And, and this is why it's so this is why we hire on skill and fire and attitude, because actually it's really hard to interview for attitude. So this is why people, we want to, but it is really difficult. Recruitment is difficult always, but trying to find models where you can try and figure out someone's attitude to see if that one will fit what you're looking for, it's much harder than just reading a CV and see what people's experiences are. Exactly. So uh, why uh, do employers uh, give more importance than ever to uh, the hiring for attitudes, uh, how can I say, situation? Well, I th I think it, it is linked into VUCA, as we spoke about before. In many aspects, the, the main sort of skill you can use in VUCA is an attitude. <laughs> so it's kind of, I don't know, it goes kind of <laughs> tricky. So I think, what, what are the things? 
it moves faster than ever. I mean, we've said that before, and I'm sure we will say that again in the future. But what I mean with that is that let's say I have the perfect skill for a position, which means I get hired for a job. I will probably be faster proficient in that role. I would be fairly quick delivering value for the company, for sure, because I have exactly the right skill set and experience for that role. However, what happens with me in the long run? Uh, No role is static. Will I learn new things? Will I be able to adapt? Will I fit the culture of the company, the mission, the vision, the values? Uh, that is going to be more defining how I perform a year or two years from now. Will I get promoted? Will I be able to move around within different positions? So, of course, as an organization, if you hire for skill, you, you do solve a problem. And for some jobs, maybe you're okay with that. You don't yeah. actually, you want people to work for you for one, two years in this particular role. That's been, that's your business model. Um, I'm not saying that's wrong because that person still learns the skill, gets on the workplace, so it doesn't have to be wrong. Uh, but it's just if you really are looking for someone that can solve problems for you also in the future that you haven't yet defined, you might be looking for an attitude rather than a particular skill. So yeah. hire for attitude, teach the skill, I think is what <laughs> Is another like I'm sure there's like a Harvard Business Review article saying that. <laughs> uh, th- uh, I'm wondering, uh, are we? Um, how can I say? Uh, is uh, is are the companies are uh, expecting different uh, attitudes? For example, uh, is it uh, does it uh, differ uh, from a company to another company? Uh, the right. expectations uh, are expectations different uh, up to companies. And that's a very good question. I think this is where it gets blurry what we mean, because I think the different uh, companies will have different cultures. Uh, exactly. I think most that's most companies yeah. would be looking for a growth mindset. I think most people mm-hmm. look for, for people who wants to change uh, or we willing for change. Um, but but certain. So so I worked in an, uh, an environment, let's say, that is very fast moving. It's entrepreneurial um, and the values are very linked to that. It's nothing is impossible and uh, passion. There's there's a choice of values there that means that it gets very frustrating sometimes because we don't like to say no. So we, we say yes, even though we don't really know how to figure it out. So if you are a person that would fit that culture, you will enjoy it because you will thrive from it. But if you like a culture that is thinking things through properly before you launch it, um, that rather, you know, wait a year before you, you go ahead with something and pilot things forever, then you will not enjoy it there. And, and then yeah. you will not succeed. And I think that is when it becomes a lose lose, uh, as a recruitment process. Um, so, Attitude or, or, or you know, uh, values could be another way of saying, saying it, mm-hmm. as in what kind of values you find is important or priorities or way of working. And I think yeah. this is where transparency is so important uh, exactly. in the recruitment process. Um, exactly. Uh, on, on the other hand, uh, I, I think some uh, of attitudes are uh, more common, like uh, willing to... Uh, be in a uh, project or um, um, how can I say motivation, positive positivity, these kind of attitudes are uh, always uh, expected by uh, employers. But maybe uh, as you told, uh, you were working in an education environment and for example in media environment, uh, they are are expecting different attitudes. Maybe. Uh, could be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I am a little bit. I have been in the same culture for ten years, so for yeah. sure, I am. I am flavored by it. Uh, and but I have friends that work in many different areas, and the cultures at their companies are very different, and they're still liking it. So I don't think there's one culture that will win them all. Um, but I do believe it's just important that you find a culture that fits you. Um, yeah. And also that you don't pretend to be someone. I see that quite a bit. People saying like, I love change. I love, you know, challenges, like develop me. And in the end, when they end up being a situation, they're like, they're like, hang on a minute, but where's the manual? I need like, uh, someone needs to tell me exactly what to do. And then they're in conflict because they're told 
they, you know, this is how you're supposed to be, but maybe you're not. Maybe you actually like structure and you really, you can learn how to be more flexible. You can learn how to, you know, grow beyond that, but it could be something you could then actually bring to the right organization where they need exactly that. So there, there, there's one should both look at the culture of the organization, but also, of course, look inwards at yourself yeah. to try and to be honest with yourself of what you, what you're actually yeah. looking for instead of who you want to be. Yeah, uh, even if it sounds like theoretical, it's coming from uh, actual experience. But uh, yeah. I have a very, how can I say, uh, um, difficult question for you, uh, mm. which is asked by. Uh, A, a young member uh, from my team in Turkey. We were okay. preparing for you, <laughs> not just by myself. With my no, team. I'm, I'm sweating now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, really, I, I'm wondering these uh, questions answer because uh, she um, asked that. Uh, how can I say? Huh, uh, let's talk about hiring process. So. Uh, Are uh, the evaluation tools for hiring to evaluate assess uh, attitudes mm -hmm. subjective enough, or what do we do to uh, evaluate um, attitudes uh, with an objective mind? Yeah. I know you are not a, a hardcore recruiter, but I I'm sure you have a strong yeah. opinion about that. I, I, I have an opinion, but if I had the answer, I probably would be a millionaire. Because if I could figure out exactly how to do this, you know, I would, that would be a very good business idea, let's just say that. Mm -hmm. So what, what I can say is that um, I do believe in, uh, I mean, okay, how do I structure this answer? So there are, you can make questions that are behavioral, meaning you, you, you look for behaviors in people's past and you can look for hypothetical, giving people an a situation and see how they react to it. I think if that makes a lot of sense, these two buckets. Yeah, for behaviors, uh, we are using, yeah. you know, competency-based interviews, but for attitudes, yeah. what are we using? So this is what I was getting at. I, I see those as two buckets of types of interview questions that you can ask. And yeah. personally, I would go for the hypothetical because I think mm -hmm. behavioral, like uh, tell me about a situation when uh, you handled change, for example, then people would say, when I was in this situation, X, Y, and Z, blah, blah. I like when you give them a, a situation, like uh, this is happening right now, you're in charge of this, mm. how would you address it? Because I think both you see people, how they react in that actual interview situation a little bit. Um, everything is fictional in an interview, but that is still real. Um, but you can also see how, how they follow sort of the thread of solving a situation like that. And, and where I would pick it up is everything from like who they include and these kind of things that for me actually tells me a little bit about uh, their their attitude to such a situation and, and you know. but another one and this is 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 not rocket science to be honest but I end up being very transparent about our culture and the way we work and mm -hmm. and I'm brutal about it I don't only sell it I tell them all the bad stuff as well. Um, and I do it in an early interview because then they can think about it. Because even if they, if they at least understand and they still want it, then I think I have 50-50 win here. Because if they at least <laughs> hear all the brutal side of, of, of who we also are, then you can, as an adult, also assess, is this where you want to be? And I've had candidates that... I gave them a full spiel, both good, but also the bad. Uh, and, um, and and they come back to me and say like, wow, uh, thank you for your transparency. I don't think I would be successful here. Uh, and and when I say bad, you know what I mean? It's more um, every company has their quirks that comes with who they are. Uh, uh, just in general, like how you would... Um, How you tackle things? How you? How? What's your values and these kind of things? Yeah. This was kind of a vague answer. Did I did, yeah. did I get any, anywhere close? Uh, yeah, yeah, closer. So, uh, my uh, next question will uh, be about this as well. Um, for example, you hired a right attitude uh, talent to your company, and uh, how does a right kind of attitude uh, help improve the company, the organization? 
right? Yeah. Um, so I think there's a there's a link between your attitude and your mindset with directly how you will solve problems, how you Definitely, will actually yeah. tackle your job, which of course impacts the company. Like that will drive value. Uh, I also believe that uh, another buzzword, of course, is engagement. How engaged someone is at work, and engagement is 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 beyond satisfaction. It's it's a true energy behind what you do you really care about the company you care at the purpose the mission the vision and all these things um and and, and it becomes almost personal to you and i think part of of what makes you engaged is your manager is is what other people are doing to you but part of what makes you engaged is what you bring uh and i think if you feel that your attitude, your mindset, and your values are matching with the culture you're in, you're way more likely to be engaged. And engagement, that is proven to, to generate value for companies. Gallup has done plenty of research here where they can see that they can actually follow engagement assessment to anything from you recommend this company, you, you stay longer, uh, you, you generate more revenue, there, there is this very clear link. And I think you won't really get that full engagement unless the, the person's attitude and mindset is matching your, your culture and your values. Uh, should the organizations uh, develop the attitudes of their employees? Ah, Um, it's a good is point. A like, you program, can, or uh, is attitude right. teachable? You know, I, I you can on you go ask the question: What's the cause and what's the effect here? Right? Or, 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 or who's driving who? And I think it's a oh, mix. Yeah, yeah. I think um, with no doubt, I'm still traditional enough to believe in leadership by example. I believe that the leaders will set the tone for for how. Uh, these things shine. Uh, and I've seen situations where you can get a whole team spiraling up because, of course, if, if the team then feel that they have great attitude and, and then the growth mindset and the learning and they're engaged, then they will push the leader up forward because if you have a full team that is that engaged, you have to step up because they're hungry and they're speeding on. You have to go with them. In the same way, it can go the other way around. As in, like, you can start spiraling down. But I do believe that as an individual, you have a choice and you have a huge impact. You can break. You don't have to be the manager to break a circle like that. It, it, it takes integrity, mainly, to, to, to sort of step out of something like that. And for me, very often, it, it is about stop blaming it on something else. Stop blaming it on them, the bosses or the organization or that you didn't get a, a good onboarding. All of this might be true. There might be things that has gone wrong, but blaming it is never productive. So finding a, a way of breaking that, you as an individual can can get other people to sort of spiraling up again. And then maybe the leader can step up. And I mean, we all know it's having a, everybody isn't a good leader. And even if you're a good leader, maybe you haven't the experience yet to, to yeah. fully lead. So, so you can't just wait for your manager, or your leader to, to make you engaged or, or, or make you happy. That's then, then I think you're, you're going to wait for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you have uh, to have a, a attitude that you, uh, you want to learn, you know, So right? nobody, yeah. no, nobody uh, will put uh, this information to your brain. So you have to self-develop yeah. yourself. And ideally, you find someone that is inspiring to you. See mm. someone yep. that you believe. And, and whatever you want, like, personality, attitude, values, don't care about the word. But see mm -hmm. someone that you believe. I That is the kind of person I want to be at work. And I think that can be very sort of powerful for you as a person if, if there's something you're aiming for uh, of who you want to be. Uh, do you have a story about uh, uh, a case that you choose, you chose uh, attitudes yeah. over yeah. experience or skills? Uh, oh, yes, I have. Yeah, uh, uh, plenty, I must say, because I've been lucky as well that I've hired a lot of young people and they don't really actually have the skills. So you have to hire an attitude. Um, okay. 
so I, I can't get like a direct person in my head, but um, there, there's, there is, there is something with people in general. Also, when I notice if they're very flexible and open-minded already when you're interviewing them, how you're scheduling these things and what they're willing to do. And I'm not saying only offering time and being desperate, but there's something in that kind of attitude, how people are handling those things, uh, which has sometimes made me interested in a candidate that based on the CV, maybe I wouldn't really put that high up. And then they they raise up rather based on, on the kind of attitude I get. Um, but overall, I think when I interview, that's what I'm looking for. I, I look at the CV to make sure it teaches me something. But then my whole interview, I, I spend on trying to figure out as much as I can about the mindset of the person uh, and the drives and, and the values and sort of those things m- much more than the particular skills. <laughs> Uh, and uh, my intern has another question for you. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, how, how can I say? Uh, for example, uh, did you uh, witness any of uh, this kind of a, a case that uh, attitude covers up uh, the lack of skill or lack of experience? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so of, of, if you talk about hiring, how difficult it is. I definitely hired thinking someone has a certain attitude and a mindset, uh, and has not worked out for sure. Mm. Uh, and I think, uh, but I, I would say I, that mistake I would do more often if I only hired based on skin. So I think that is something that comes by how difficult recruitment is. Um, I would argue that. I have kept people on longer, even though they were failing in their job, but I was <laughs> keeping them on because of their attitude. And that's sometimes not good either. Uh, trying to really make it work because you think the person's sort of attitude is is so in it and so personal and everything and doing everything. And you, you try and make it work and it takes longer before you realize it's just not working out because of course that can be the case. Um, So I'm more been guilty of that end, uh, letting it go too far because I think someone's attitude will win in the end, and it doesn't because of course it's not enough. You you need certain skills and and and, and then potentially experiences and and if if so it's it's not either or completely. It's just the skills are more obvious to see. It's the attitude you need to probe for. That's why I spend the time on it. It doesn't mean skills is in. Is not valuable. They are valuable, but yeah. I think it, it's getting that balance right. Uh, in, in, from your perspective, again, from your view, uh, do you think uh, the recruiters, very generally, are mm-hmm. equipped enough to um, assess attitudes on in hiring process? process? Uh, no, is my quick answer. But I think it is because it's so hard. I don't think it's because people are not trying. Uh, I've done interview trainings uh, myself, as in running interview trainings, and I know it's easy. I say these words, and then I go and do an interview like the day after, and I don't even follow my own advice because in the end we have our personalities and we go on gut feel. So even if I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the theory of this, it is very hard to do it in practice. Um, but. I think the classic is right. If you don't aim for the stars, you won't reach the moon. So, so talking about it and really trying to to aim for what you are looking for when you're hiring and, and recruiting uh, will still take you closer to the goal. I, I know there's loads of these assessments that you can use, um, and we've looked into those, and it's just very hard to prove that they actually gives the person success in the role. It can prove that you're going to hire them for the role, but it, it takes a long time to build the data to see that they're actually also successful in those roles. Um, but uh, I'm hoping we get better and, and better tools as with all technology because it could just help everyone because as an individual, you are going to be more successful in a position that fits you both from skill and attitude. So so if if employers could get better tools to do it, you as employee I'm sure we'll also benefit uh, from it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
And I was thinking the um, uh, candidates part again. So, uh, but 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 uh, I guess uh, if you're, you agree with me or not, I don't know. But I guess uh, attitudes are not substitutes for experience for or for skills. It's just a no. complete. It's just a, like a juice, you know. Uh, no. So, uh, oh, but in my case, uh, I hired maybe. Uh, 3,000 people in 14 years now for companies. Mm. Uh, but uh, sometimes we chose attitude over experience, especially, right. for example, we are just uh, looking for a two years uh, experience of uh, software development or um, mm. uh, front-end engineering. like. But uh, we chose uh, the uh, new uh, graduate one because Mm -hmm. He was so willing to work. He was so willing to uh, adapting himself. But the other candidate was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, after ten. Yeah. No, but but you you're right. And in some times, this could be a case that two people will equal level of experience and skills. You pick them on an attitude, so it doesn't always, yeah. uh, and not with a attitude, but with a with an attitude that fits your culture. Um, so you're absolutely right. And I think for certain roles, of course, they can be more of an expert track. Like you really mm -hmm. need someone with a specific skill. And 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 I don't say it's wrong to hire based on skill. I just know that over time. Even if you got the skills you needed, if they don't really fit the culture, they won't really enjoy it either. And I think this is sort of, I see it very much when we spoke before. I, I think I told you that I see this as dating. Like you, <laughs> it has to be a mutual match here. This exactly. is not just one picking another. It's, yeah. and, 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 and it could be that it, you got it wrong or you knew from the beginning that this person... Let's see if they fit, but they have the skill I need, which could be what you have to do. And then you move forward. But very often it comes around to bite you. Um, and and as I said, I don't I don't see it as 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 that terrible either. If you have certain teams where you hire a lot of people and, and you're not expecting them to stay. I, I worked for Accenture for three years and I don't want to. It's nothing bad about them, but that that's their business model. Bring in a lot of people and get a lot of momentum but but the 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 theory is that not everybody stays right people have to leave at some point otherwise you know that doesn't work so, and then you pump in new blood all the time and and that's their their model and and it's fabulous to work there so mm -hmm. so these things is it's depending on what you're looking for and what you need in your organization and in your team as well yeah um Like we are completing our time now, but yeah, we have a wow. question from one of our viewers, and nice. uh, th this is: uh, Do you uh, from Hussein? Uh, do you have any story oh. that you hired a person who has strong attitude and the skills at the same time? By uh, saying mm. strong, uh, it can be two different meanings. You know, strong, but in a negative ah, way. Ah, I see what you mean. Like, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. maybe you understood the question. I think if if. I, I directly put it in the bucket that you're you have to be big enough to hire people that are bigger than you. Uh, there is a saying that if everyone hires people that are smaller than them, we will be a company of dwarfs. But if everyone hires people bigger than them, we will become a company of giants. Uh, and and this goes a little bit maybe in this. So yes, I have hired people with strong attitude that also was clashing with, with mine partly and 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 great skills and and it was it wasn't easy i can't say so but the the value this person brought to the team was different than everyone else so so it's a good question meaning that when i say fitting the culture i don't mean um that it in any way should be that everybody looks the same and and wants the same and works the same it's it's not about personality for me But everybody in my team needs to really care about what we do here. Like I really need everybody to to be passionate about the, the student experience that we are providing, for example. That is what I need from my team. But if they want to, you know, challenge me, work different ways, uh, have different, you know, personality traits, 
that is something that I, as a manager, need to learn how to work with <laughs> and how to manage. And maybe I should have said this in the beginning so people haven't misunderstood me. Uh, I do not believe in homogeneous teams or organizations. I, I, I totally believe, you know, male, female, diversity, language, internationality, cultures, we will only grow together uh, as diverse as we can be. But, exactly. So this could be a little bit into this uh, bucket that you should not hire people that only like fits you in that sense. No. Yeah. And sometimes the best attitude is not right for your company culture. You know, maybe yeah. you're yeah. expecting a different thing. So, uh, yeah. And we don't want copy paste, copy paste teammates. No. You know? no. You're no, definitely no. right. Uh, yeah. And diversity and inclusion is the most hot, hot topic at the moment. And It's very right. Yeah, yeah. very right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and this person I'm thinking about, she went on and and has now a top role in in the, still in the organization, but in a different team. So uh, so clearly it was you know this kind of positive friction in some ways uh, you could argue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we were talking like half an hour, and but it's yeah. only 40 minutes now. And I told you that you you won't yeah. understand how it passes. Oh my god, I can go on for an hour. This is like my <laughs> favorite topic. <laughs> uh, do you want something uh, to say before our closing about transparency, about yeah, hiring for yeah. uh, attitudes um, or leadership? I think, well, I guess my, my point is to reiterate, these are all my very personal opinions. I'm, I'm not saying anything on behalf of anyone else. And, um, uh, well, it's good that we got to the diversity part of it because I don't want I, to come across that attitude and culture is the same, hence you're looking for a perfect sort of model to fit. I think mm -hmm. maybe mindset is a better word to use because then I think we capture most of, of of the sort of elements because i think they uh, that is is maybe more what i mean than 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 culture um yeah. but other than that transparency I, i i i i am a very transparent person with my opinions and my feelings very often for good and for bad uh, but i do use it a lot when i recruit but i've also used used it on the other end because i do believe mm -hmm. it's better that you understand who i am And then if you don't think I fit you, then I don't want to work for you. So, so it's better that you figure that out too. And, and I, sh I won't take that too personal, hopefully. Uh, it can be hard to actually live by that, but, but that's mm -hmm. my theory anyway. And uh, opposite of the common uh, thought, uh, transparency, transparency is the most easiest way. It's very comfortable, you know. Yes. So, <laughs> because you are, if you are not transparent, it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Just tell you, what you, yeah. Yeah. Step one is you need to be comfortable with yourself. I guess that's 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 the place yeah, you need to get to at some point. But but mm -hmm. no, absolutely. And I think um, uh, I've had the luxury of working with a couple of really good managers already early in my career, and I think that matters a lot. I, I saw uh, I was allowed to be myself because that's not always the case, and 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 you're trying to fit in or being a certain type. And I'm not talking about the attitude again, but you're trying to be just like everyone else. And and I didn't have to do that. I was allowed very early to be who I was. Uh, and, and 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 I think that, of course, has just given me the confidence to, to be transparent about who I am. So I think I am grateful to the people that early in my career encouraged yeah. me <laughs> to, be, uh, to be who I am. Uh, I definitely agree with you. I, uh, I yeah. would like to be transparent all the time with my candidates, with my clients, my managers yeah. or my teammates. Uh, Karin, thank you very much. It was very thank nice you. to have you. It was a lovely <laughs> conversation. And uh, it, uh, by this occasion, uh, I met you, and uh, yeah. uh, which is a very uh, good thing. Uh, and uh, please keep in touch. And thank Likewise. you for your participation again. And thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Karin Stenstam was with us today. And thank you all your for all your questions, uh, for your participations. And uh, next uh, week, uh, by a coincidence, another English-speaking uh, guest I have from the uh, United States this time. And uh, she is another uh, excellent HR leader as well. So... Until next week, see you and uh, have a lovely night. Bye-bye.